Hello viewers, good day to you. Welcome back. Glad you guys are here. I know, I'm super glad to be here. Check this thing out. It's a vintage 2002 Pontiac Firebird. And wouldn't you know it, it's hot outside. And oh no, not another air conditioning video. Yep, that's right. It's weird. I can't get in. Customer states, AC does not blow cold. And at 100 billion thousand degrees here in uh, sunny Florida, I can understand that. Let's see what we got going on here. Starting the engine. Oh no, that's not the V8. Wah, wah, wah. Pop in the hood and see what we got going on. Look at that there. 155,417 miles on the odometer with a security light and a brake warning indicator. Actually, that's only indicating because the parking brake's on. Let's see what's under the bonnet. Mirror latch. Ooh, all right, so I went wah, 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 because it's not a V8 powered Pontiac Firebird. However, it does have a 3800 Series 2, best engine ever created ever, ever. No, seriously, not kidding. Those things will last and run and run and last, and they never fail ever, no matter what. You can put a hole through the side of the block of that thing, drain the oil out, fill it full of glass and sand, and it will still run. Not kidding. Anyway, it's hot as the Mojave out here, so I'm getting out of the sun. We're gonna swing this thing on into the shop. Get the AC machine connected, power the system on, and uh, we're gonna see if this thing is good. Oh my God. Turn that back off. Okay, I found a problem. Okay, well, since we have no climate control, windows down, I need to get some air in here. It's like 140 degrees inside of this uh, cabin. Too hot too hot to tolerate. All right, we're backing it in, backing it up, circumnavigating the door of death here in the corner. We'll get past the fans, we're gonna get past Troy, we're gonna get past this Jeep that's in the shop there, and I'm gonna back this into my big rack on the corner. Ah, nice, we're in view of the fan now, all right. All right, guys, cooling system's repaired. It's cool off in here now. See you guys later in the video, we're all good. say we're good yeah looks good to me powering down Ooh, how low can you go all right back under this hood again not in direct sunlight it appears we've got an issue with that compressor down there let's go ahead uh, get this thing restarted and turn that system back on I want to see what it uh, what it's gonna do and I want to make sure that it is in fact that compressor uh, that was making the noise restarting the engine and maximum cool fan on high man that's wild loud noises okay so when it's like oh look at that yeah, there's, a, there's a compressor issue here i'm certain of it let's go fetch the machine and connect it and see what uh see if it's making any pressure or anything like that look at that needle jumping everywhere it's making pressure now there's a, definitely a compressor issue here low side is way way too low let's go ahead recover this system let's see what's inside of it begin recovering now okay, let's go ahead and shut this thing down before that compressor turns into a grenade and puts a hole in the side of the engine block and then proves my theory correct about that 3.8. Just because it will run with a hole in the side of the block doesn't mean I wanna be the catalyst that causes that to happen. Well, that can't be right. Look what we recovered out of here. 2.057 pounds refrigerant. Uh, I think that's probably a little bit overcharged. Let's go look up the spec real quick and make sure that, that is, uh, that's over. If this is overcharged, I'm gonna have to put in the correct charge before I do anything there i'll pull up specifications fluid types capacities we're going to scroll it down to uh refrigerant where are you refrigerant it's refrigerant right here what is my specified amount 1.5 pounds is uh what we're supposed to have and we pulled out two pounds so having excessive refrigerant uh may cause a compressor issue so let's put in the correct amount real quick uh, charge this I'm pretty sure it's gonna have a noise, but I, I just need to be thorough and make sure I don't want to sell 
a compressor just because it has an overcharged situation. So let's do zero, 1.5 pounds, high side. I'll be right back when this thing's done. Beginning charging system sequence now. All right, we beeped, we're charged. It's got 1.5 pounds in it, not 2.0 and some change pounds. Let's just see if this compressor is gonna make that clanky clank noise. And then uh, I guess we'll go from there. And yeah. Yeah, that's still not okay. How about our pressure? 30, 100 and, well, yeah, we're dropping now. 175, yeah. Yeah, that compressor is on the fritz, that's for sure. So here's what we're gonna do. We're shutting her down. I know it needs a compressor because that's uh, not a normular noise. But I also need to check this system and make sure that compressor didn't send debris throughout the, the rest of the system. So let's get this thing uh, evacuated one more time and we're gonna crack this open. I'm going to, I'm probably gonna break it open right here because I think that the uh, orifice tube is right here inside of that piece of the pipe. So I'm gonna crack it open right here and we're gonna see if the orifice is there. Um, if there is debris in this system, then the orifice tube would have caught it. And if there's no debris, uh, we'll put a compressor on there and then recheck. All right, let's crack into this system real quick. I want to inspect the uh, orifice tube for debris. I, I believe it's in this little manifold area assembly right here. Uh, I don't know if it's in this line or the one below it. I think it's the one below it. So let's get this disconnected here and see if we can't recover that tube. I could be wrong, it may not be in here, but it might be, I think it is. Let's find out. And I can't see. Hey, right, let's just use a mirror to help. And yeah, yeah, I see something down in that hole. Okay, all right, let's pull that thing out of there. We'll get in there with some needle nose action, get a hold of that orifice and remove the unit. Here we go, oh my God. Look at that. Oh, that is bad. Holy smokes. Look at this thing right here. Look at that. That is completely clogged with aluminum and like other compressor debris. That's that's nasty. Hang on here. Let's put that down. Wow. Yeah, that thing has been that's been eating itself alive for quite some time now. That compressor is junk. Now, the problem that we have here is all of this material has passed through the condenser at some point, which leads me to believe that there is more of this uh, type of contaminant inside of that condenser. So I think we're gonna have to go full Monty on this repair. We're gonna need the compressor, condenser, another orifice. Uh, I'm gonna change the receiver dryer and we're probably also going to, uh, well, we're gonna have to do a flush on the entire system. So we will we'll back flush the uh, evaporator. I'm not gonna remove that, but we can back flush it through the suction side right here. I don't think much debris has entered that because most of it is gonna get caught up in the screen. Hey, there you go, now you can see. In the screen that's part of this orifice assembly. So, okay, I need to go and uh, order a compressor kit. Alrighty then, estimate has been completed, submitted, approved, parts ordered. We're gonna go for the full Monty on this uh, Firebird here. Compressor's coming out. Uh, the receiver dryer is coming out. We're gonna put a new orifice tube in it. I'm gonna back flush the system. And we're also going to replace uh, that condenser because I know it's full of aluminum uh, compressor metal shavings. So let's go ahead and start getting this thing pulled apart. I'm gonna start with the stuff that's right in front of us. I'll pull this receiver dryer out. Unclick that. Come here, you. It's stuck. We'll pull the receiver dryer out of it. I'll get the belt removed, and then we can get that compressor disconnected and begin removing that unit. Uh, once that guy is out, I'll probably start pulling this intake stuff off, and we can see if we can't slip that condenser out from in front of the radiator. There we go. Okay, we've got one more 10 mil bolt on the line here. Get that guy loose. in here yeah much junk okay that's our receiver dryer with hose get rid of that and I can go ahead and pull this line off right now bolts on here 
to the top of the condenser. I'll reuse this hard metal line here. This thing is okay. I'll just have to flush that out with some uh, AC flush. All right, next up, let's go ahead and get this belt off. So let's untension our tensioner. Get that guy out of there. And we will pull the belt. This belt's in good shape. I didn't see any cracks on the grooves or anything like that, so we're gonna reuse it. So I'll just set this thing aside for now. All right, so there's gonna be some order of operations that have to come into play here. I need to figure out whether I wanna take this compressor loose and pull it forward to reach back and get a hold of the bolt that holds the manifold on, or do I wanna to try to reach down in there and get that manifold bolt off? I don't think I'm gonna be able to get that out. So I'm gonna go with option A, and we're gonna unbolt this compressor, try to move the thing forward, and then, uh, then unbolt the hoses at the manifold. So first off, uh, what I'm gonna do is get this, uh, this either pulley off of here, because it's kind of in the way and I could use that extra space right there. Here, we'll speed this up some with the wrong socket. Trying again. With the right socket. I probably don't need to remove this, but I, I just really can't see. So we're just gonna move that out of the way. Now right here, there's one bolt, number two, right next to it. And then there's a third one down under that compressor, or under the, uh, the pulley rather, at the bottom. I don't know if there's one at the back on a bracket or not. Uh, I guess I'll figure that out once uh, I get these first three bolts removed. I think it's just the three, but you never know. There could always be a sneaky hidden bracket somewhere, in which case I'll have to probably put this on the rack and get it from the bottom. There's our connector, stick that thing aside. Here, let's get down in there and get the ones out that I can't see. I can barely feel it over here. Oh, the hose is kind of in the way. Yeah, look at that. Catch 22. Here, let's try. Get that on there. I need a shorter extension. Wait, I know how to make this work. Watch this. We'll take the deep socket off, put the super shallow socket on, and that's going to be perfect clearance, I think, for that ratchet to reach down inside that hole and get a hold of the extension. Get on there. There. Now, I can get down with this uh, ratchet here, get on that extension, get that bottom one off. That's the hardest one, I think, by my guesstimation. Oh, and it's tight, too. Wow. Yeah, I gotta brace myself here. Oh, unclicks. There we go. Come on out. Okay, that's fastener numero uno. Got that one out. Good. Let's get the next one. The one on the side. I think there's just the three. On ratcheting clip there. That's sloppy. Okay, that's two. Second one, and we'll get that top one right here. You should see this compressor move. If it doesn't move, then uh, there might be another one in the back somewhere, like on a bracket. I'm hoping there's not. That's never know. Let's see what we got. Are you free? Uh, negative. Kinda, yeah, there's a bracket somewhere in the back. Okay, let's see. I think, looking back behind this compressor, I think we can see it. See the spark plug wire right there? See that little bolt right behind it? Flashlight. I believe that that is the, the bolt in question. And if so, I can probably get that from up here on the top. Let's pull this plug wire out without breaking it. I don't wanna break a plug wire. 
Oh, come on, there we go. Cool, did not break. Good. Yeah, right, there she is, right there. That's a, that's the one we need to get. And I can't get that out without getting that manifold off. Okay, it really is a catch-22. No worries, I'll reach down there, we'll get it. I need a 13 mil ratcheting wrench. Let's see, and it's not there. Okay, found it. It was right where I, uh, where I left it. So, changing plans again, I'm gonna try to get that manifold off. I'm just gonna have to reach down in there and get a little dirty. I have no uh, no real other option here. Let's get this guy on. Hopefully that'll just unthread by hand once I crack it loose. That's tight. Oh, there we go. Now it's less tight. Yeah, that suction line is in the way. There's no way I'm getting a tool on that. This uh this hose on on here yeah that's loose enough let me get my stubby ratcheting wrenches i think it's gonna be 13 that one right there Dude. going back in close quarters combat down in that hole there we go i'll just fingertip this thing out and pull that manifold off it's not how i wanted to do this because this is very awkward. I'm like leaned over, my feet are slipping, and I still have some back pain from the from earlier. Long story. I slept on my couch last night. Okay, here it comes. Got it. There we go. That's the one. That's the back of the compressor. So that should get this manifold to come out of here. Let's wiggle that guy out. Beautiful. All right, we'll just set this thing aside right here. And now I can go back in and get that 15 off the back of the engine block right there. I'm gonna employ the same method as the brackets. Super shallow socket with the extension. That should, that should oh look at that. Yeah. Cool. That came out very nice. Let me retrieve that fastener here. And our compressor should come out very freely at this point. Let's see, let's get, get these hoses tucked out of the way. You go back, back over there. This one's attached to, uh, it's at the condenser at the bottom, okay. I'll have to dig that out later. There. Come on, compressor. We don't want you in here anymore. Come on out. That's a big old unit too. Reminds me of the old uh, R12 compressors. Woo! Got it. Okay, looks like I'm gonna have to reuse this bracket, so let's get this unbolted right now. Looks like it's just two 13 mils. Pop this guy out. And I'll keep these bolts with the bracket so we know that that's where they go. Set that aside. Oh, look in there. There's even debris inside of the, uh, the screen on the suction tube. Yeah, this thing's wasted. She done. I kinda wanna take this apart and autopsy it later. Yeah, we'll leave that there. Okie dokes, next up, let's go ahead and get uh, this intake tubing off, our decorative cover, and get some access to the radiator core support. And we'll see how this uh, condenser comes out. It's, I'm sure it's bolted to the front of the radiator, somehow, some way. So uh, let's get some access to the area. We'll go from there. So we'll take our air box loose, pop the cover, pull our snorkel out, set that aside. Engineer filtration element. It's brand new. Nice. And we got some uh, 10 mil fasteners here. Pull these guys off. I think there's just four. Yeah, whoa, that's like the whole radio support. Look at that. The whole thing kind of flopped back. All right. How about that? Here's our condenser. I wonder what, uh, what makes it attach here. 
Okay, so from what I'm gathering, this thing's not bolted on, but it does rest with some uh, little tabs uh, into some slots in front of the radiator. Uh, the issue is, is that uh, the hose that uh, is connected to the bottom of the condenser. I need to reach down in there and get a hold of that hose. There's no way I'm taking you guys with me because you're not going to be able to see what I'm up to. So I'm just going into this with Solo here. I believe it's a 13 mil nut and like a manifold type of uh, fitting to bolt it onto the condenser with a stud. So I need to get back there, way down there, and get that guy unbolted. Yeah, there we go. All right, the nut's loose. I dropped the nut. It's fine now. I can retrieve it once we get all these parts out of the way. Oh, I see it. Here we go. Here comes the manifold. Or the hoses, rather. I'll pull these all the way out. That way I can flush them with some solution here. And some brake clean. Set that aside. Those hoses are still good. And where's that nut? There's our nut right there. Okay. So, this condenser should be free. It's disconnected from the other side. Just give it a tug. And here it comes. There she goes, got it. That's our condenser. It looks good, but it's full of metal. So, uh, we'll put a new one in it. Set that down right there. Okay, let's see what we've got in here. Anything, got a little bit of dirt, some leaves. That's looking good, okay. Yeah, see there's there's one of the brackets, one down below it, and then two more brackets on that side that hold on to the condenser. All right. Here, let's dig out, loud noises back there. Let's dig out the AC flush kit, and then we will uh, we'll fill this guy up and then flush out those lines in preparation for the new parts to arrive. What we're gonna do, we will just fill this vessel with some AC flush material, we'll pressurize it, and then uh, run uh, run the fluid through the lines using this nozzle right here. Here, let me clear some space here. Get that stuff out of the way, get out of here. Okay. Crack this guy open. There we go. And, ooh, that's on there. Oh, that's very on there. That's very, very stuckish. Come on, there we go. That was nice and tight. Okay, let's give her a fill. Ah, spillage. This is not the proper sound effect for pouring fluid. Troy's back there grinding on his Jeep again. He's cutting out the front fender wells. Whoa, that stuff stinks. Dang. He's cutting out the front fender wells to accommodate his giant Toyo tires. There we go. Okay, let's go see. Let's go see what he's doing. We can see you. Jeep people doing Jeep things. I don't know, nobody understands. Let's go back to our AC unit. All right, so we're full. Let's connect our little hose here. This is the uh, output hose. And then we just connect stop air to that end right there. We can pump that into the evaporator. We'll do that first and then we'll go out and do the lines next. All right, we got shop air coming in. Let's connect it to our flushing vessel. And we're gonna open up the valve and supply some pressure. What I'm gonna do here is we're gonna back flush this. So this is the in, intake uh, tube right here. This is the output suction tube. We're gonna go backwards through the, uh, through the evaporator and reverse flush this. We're gonna see how much nasty stuff wants to come out on the other side here. Back flushing, back flushing. Ew, nasty. Wow. Kind of making a mess, but whatever. 
Oh, there we go. There's some dirty nasty coming out. Send it. So the entire contents of that bottle has been pushed into the evaporator. And now we can keep blowing it out. Uh oh, my valve stuck. No worries. Power down. Sticking valves are not okay. Okay, let's go outside to the trash cans and we can flush the line. Okay, this line looks like it's the worst of it. I've got some black stuff. You can see it inside right there. So let's go ahead and spray this one out first. Keep an eye on the, uh, the piece of cardboard there. Just gonna spray all over that. Send it. Look at all that black stuff. That's all compressor material. Nasty. Okay. Next one. Look, running out. All right, those are clean. Power down. Actually, I'm not so sure about that. So I'm gonna give this one more flush with some brake clean, and then uh, I'll get another can of actual brake, or uh, actual AC flush, and we'll try it again later on with the, when that arrives. I won't get it today, because it's, uh, it's after delivery hours, but I can still throw some brake clean in there. Clean out the rest of this business. Yeah, that's nasty. Okay, one more squirt in these other lines here. Uh-oh. Ah, that came off. There we go. Hey, I got brake clean on me and I just found another cut that I didn't know that I had. That hurts. Ooh, it stings. Okay. I think we're about set here. Spray that other one out. All right, that was good to go. Both lines have been flushed out. Now we're kind of on the parts hold. Okay, let's get this stuff back inside and I need to go wash my hands because I'm suffering chemical burn on the ends of my fingers. Like, it's like right here on these two. It hurts. It stings. That's not okay. I don't like stinging pain. Here, we'll set these hoses down and I can change out the gaskets on them next. All right, gasket kit coming in. Let's get these guys swapped out and then we'll set these aside. Uh, of course, pending delivery of uh, the replacement components. We got that guy there. Looks like that's a 24404, good. And what's, uh, what's on this one here? How about a 24402? Yeah, per. All right, those two are done. On the manifold side, these are. Uh, this is where the compressor is bolted on, or where the line is bolted onto the compressor. There's two more. And I think we're looking for what were those? 24 354s? Sure, they fit. All right, that line is regasketed. We'll set that aside, and I need. One more, I think, for the end of this line right here. How about the little guy, 24401? Awesome, I'm not gonna run out of gaskets. Beautiful, okay, set this guy aside. And we're on a parts hold. Switch me tools. Switch? Hang on, switch me tools. Here, okay. hold this. Hold this. Hold this. Hold that right there, yeah. When you go to do this. Is this reversible? No. Nope. Don't do the edge like that. Do it like that. Do that right there. Oh. So see that angle? It's horrible.
Yeah, if you do it like that, it'll be inconsistent and wavy and not okay. But if you can get it, you can get it at that kind of angle where you got the flat part on it, it'll help you make it smooth. And always keep your tool moving. You don't want to leave it in just the same spot. Thank Make you. sense? Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, keep at it. Remember, high speed, light pressure, okay? Okay. Got it. And I'm glad to see he's got his protection on. Good. Yeah, this is our before where the tires were hitting the fenders and we saw the action. Now noises, get out of here. Okay, autopsy at the end. Let's uh let's take this destroyed compressor apart and bear witness to the destruction within. We may need a puller to pull this off. Yes, I will. Fortunately, I happen to have some old school GM AC compressor pulley puller pullers. There we go. I think that's the one. It's going to screw in and then it's got the shaft in the middle. You, uh, you thread that thing down and it will push and pull and remove the uh, clutch from the compressor. Let's go ahead and get this thing threaded on. And then uh, we'll pull the pulley off, pull the bolts out, and then separate the compressor body. We'll see what type of carnage and destruction lies within. I think we're reverse threaded. No, we're not. It's regular threads. Screw that down. It's going to meet the shaft. And we continue. Oh! It's, uh, that thing's on there. Yeah, you're not getting this off without a puller. No way. Here, let's just do this the expedited way. Impact. Well, there's half a clutch. How about the other piece? Oh, snap ring. Okay. Need a snap ring pliers to remove the snap ring. I must confess it has been a very long time since I've replaced a clutch. Or even removed a clutch for that matter. Usually you just change out the entire compressor. Gonna come off. Is there another snap ring in there? Sure is. There's another little one way down inside. It's kind of going to be tough to see, but I'll do my best. Interior snap ring. Oh, I can't even see. I can kind of feel it though. I guess that's going to have to work. All right, I'm on it. Squeezing it. I lost it. I'm back on it. I lost it. Oh no. Come on, snap ring. It's in there. Oop. I wonder if I break it. Looks like the seal was leaking on this thing too. I see a bunch of uh, oil and whatnot inside of there. Got it. There it comes. That's the snap ring inside and this should come off. Mm, hammer. Let's see here. I'm off and it's junk anyway, so no worries. Do I need another puller? Do I have to pull, her, pull on it again? I don't think so. It should slide off the shaft. Yeah, let's get another puller. A bigger one. Crankshaft puller here. Let's try the tie rod puller first. Seems to be the easiest. The other ones are three John. They've got a pointed end on them, and this one has like a flat end. Try that one. There we go. It's coming off. Two. Okay, that's our clutch. Here's our electromagnet device that engages our clutch. Uh, that thing should also be coming off. I'll pull it with the puller. Why not? It's not like I don't care if I break it. Or if I do care, what I'm saying is I don't care. There it goes. Nice. So we're looking at a couple 13 mil bolts here. Pull these guys out. Nasty. And that's gonna split this case in half. Then uh, we can see what the internals look like. They look like they're leaking onto my, uh, my desk here. There. Okay. 
hammer time again. You're gonna come apart. I think so. Maybe the smaller hammer would be a better choice here. Impact hammer. Actually, real quick, before I get too violent, I've got an idea. We'll thread in one of these bolts, hit that with a hammer. Maybe it'll drive the case apart. And it will. Nice. That was actually effective. Yep, the case started to separate right here. Try one more time on this other side. It kind of came off a little sideways. Ah, there it goes. Now we're cooking. Let's see what's inside of here. There's our uh, there's our valves. Look at all that metal stuff in there floating around. Metal chunks everywhere. Peel away the O-ring that seals the two halves. All right, let's try to tap the shaft out. Maybe the rest of the uh, internals will pop out of there. Is it moving? Mm, negative. Here, hang on. There's a there's a bolt right here. That thing might be holding up the internals of this compressor. I don't know what else it can do. Maybe a a drain? I don't know. Come apart, compressor. It's not coming apart. Oh, I hear chunkies in there. How about that? It's not okay. Here, I've got an idea. Two blocks of wood and a hammer. There. Now it's apart. Ooh. Yeah, there's our case housing. Here's all the internal working action here. What's his problem? Yeah, there's metal chunks in this. It's a thrust bearing. Let's see, that's our little swash plate. That's what gets the pistons to rock up and down. See how that works? Turn the shaft. Swash plate moves up and down, runs each, each individual piston, and then they are valved from this little back plate over here. And there's the valves, one-way valves. Air can flow through, but they can't go back the other way. And down inside, look at that. There's chunks of metal in there. But this thing was disintegrating. That's all the noise we heard. Metal pieces. There's one. There's another piece, another piece. Oh yeah, they're everywhere. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is end of day. We have concluded the operation thus far. There's nothing more that I can do. We have no parts. Uh, I've got a condenser, I've got a compressor, I've got a receiver dryer, I've got an orifice tube, I've got some more gaskets and whatnot to replace the stock order that I just used up. All that stuff's on the way, but it will not be here until uh, probably tomorrow afternoon. So uh, I have nothing more to do on this car except for uh, powering down the lights and closing up this video because this operation, as far as today goes, is complete. Uh, that being said, as always, like thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, you know the drill. Please feel free to let me know about that by tapping that like button down below. Drop me a comment or two while you're down there. And most importantly, don't forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of Pontiac, end of AC repair, end of catastrophic cooling system, failure, end of video, end of transmission.